everybody, it's Awesome Vegans. I'm Elizabeth Alfano. So great to have you here with me as we do our radio show like we do every week, Plant-Based Life and Style with Elizabeth Alfano. Oh, we are going to get into it. We are going to break up the myths of a plant-based diet. Sometimes people say, well, how will I get enough protein? Or will I feel bad? Or what will I eat? Oh my gosh, hashtags what vegans eat. Uh, we're going to get into it all because I want to bring in today's guest, Dr. Haver, plant-based dietitian. She's an author of many books the author of Health Span Solution and Plant-Based Nutrition Guide for Idiots. Did I get that right? Plant-Based Nutrition Guide for Idiots. Yes, I think I have that right. Uh, and the Vegetarian Diet. Thank you, Juliana, for being with us today. Thank you for having me, Elizabeth. So much to get into. Um, you, as I said in the beginning, are a plant-based dietitian, and you are helping people with their diets and any hurdles that they might have. I know I hear from my camp of the world, and I am not a trained professional, but people are always coming to me and saying, "Well, what do you really eat?" and you know, "What do you cook with?" and all these these really easy hurdles that people can get over. What is the number one hurdle that people come to you with that they need help? Uh, well, I work with people all around the world with all sorts of different reasons. I work with people that are just trying to transition to a plant-based diet just because they've heard about it. Um, a lot of people mm -hmm. have serious health concerns. I work with people that are very, very sick. And I work with athletes. I work with people. I do a lot of weight loss. I have a lot of uh, mm -hmm. weight loss clients. I have a weight loss support group. But um, mostly it's about just eating healthier and finding optimal nutrition and dealing with whatever specific obstacles they may have in their life to make it as work for them as best they can. Mm -hmm. So you come to it really with a very bespoke um, schedule for each individual person, because of course, health and nutrition is so personal. And it is so um, specific to each individual, particularly if you're doing something like an athlete and you're lifting lots of weights, obviously that's going to be different than someone in their fifties that is maybe just trying to lose five, 10, 20, 30 pounds. So I can see where it would be different for each person, but is there one common misconception that people come to you with and they say like, I really want to do a plant-based diet, but there's this, and I don't know if I could do it because protein or something like this. I would say the most common misperception is exactly what you're just saying. It's that actually there's some specific details that we need to do. And what I was taught in graduate school is for a kidney disease, you do this diet. For heart disease, you do this diet. But really a whole food plant-based diet is a one size fits all way of eating that promotes optimal health for pretty much every population. I've never in my, well, 16 years now teaching this, seen anyone not thrive when they do it. And they're trying to, they're making conscientious decisions to eat in a healthful way. I've seen so many people have extraordinary outcomes just from, from changing to a plant-based diet. It doesn't have to be so perfect. There's, there are some little variations for inter individual variability, but they're very minute. And really, if you just eat a diet of whole plant foods and supplement accordingly, it's amazing what can happen. Well, let's talk about that because a lot of people are concerned that if they switch over to a plant-based diet, they're going to need a lot of supplements. But I have found for myself, and of course, as we just said, everyone is different, that sure, I take B12, but I'm also cognizant that if I were eating meat, B12 is something that is added to meat, just like I would add it to my own diet, because our soil has been so deteriorated that you're not getting the mini or minerals from the soil that we used to get when we were farming and having a nutritious soil, if you will, still on vegetables or what have you. So the animals aren't getting nutritious soil when they eat from the ground, if they even eat from the ground anymore, which they really usually don't, they're stuck in a trough. But also then, you know, we're not getting it from vegetables. So it's not really a question of a vegan diet. It's just in general, no one gets the right amount of B12. So I take B12, but otherwise, is it really necessary to have supplements on a plant-based diet? Well, I would argue that no diet is perfect and every diet has some kind of thing you need to be aware of. And it's very important to be mindful and conscientious about all of these decisions. B12 is a unique nutrient that actually everyone over the age of 50 needs to supplement no matter what their diet is. And um, there are some other notable nutrients. So I do, I do, I talk about them as the notable nutrients. There are certain ones that are perhaps limited or restricted on a plant-based diet and not necessarily just for plant-based eaters, but those are the ones that everyone needs to be aware of including B12, vitamin D, vitamin K2, iodine, zinc, and then the long chain omega-3 fatty acids. Well, hold on, because that's a great subject. Let's go through that list again, because I think that's going to be new information for people. And let's talk about where we might find those. So we talked about B12, easy to get a B12 supplement. Mine is kind of sweet, so I like it every day. It's like a little piece of candy almost. Um, what is the next one that you mentioned? 
Well, vitamin D is not unique to a vegan diet. It's something that has become a concern worldwide for pretty much sure. every population. It's become the, it's kind of like the vitamin du jour. And a lot of people are finding deficiencies or low levels, insufficiencies. And so it's something that needs to be addressed. The re there's a lot of reasons for it. Like we're supposed to be out in the sun, you know, absorbing UVB rays and converting it to active vitamin D. But a lot of us are indoors. A lot of us have um, there we're wearing sunscreen to protect our skin. A lot of people have excess fat on the body, which also it gets in the way. The darker the skin, the more time you need in the sun. There's just all these different variables, also depending on where you live. And um, there's just so many different things that can affect vitamin D absorption. So because it's not like vitamin B12, which is a water soluble nutrient that, that we have like a general um, recommendation for how much to take in a special dosing schedule, vitamin D more so needs to be tested because it's a fat soluble nutrient, so you can't have too much in your diet. And so I have my clients actually take a blood test to know their serum levels before I recommend a specific um, supplementation regimens. Okay, so vitamin D is to be tested and determined on a person by person basis, like a lot of what we're talking about. So we got vitamin D and B12, and then you mentioned K. K2 is kind of interesting and a little bit kind of controversial, but I'm not quite sure. It's just like kind of emerging about, you know, we get plenty of K1 on a plant-based diet because we're eating lots of leafy green vegetables and leafy green vegetables and greens are a wonderful place to get your vitamin K1. But that's philoquinone. There's another form called menaquinone, which is vitamin K2. It turns out we need both forms. How much is it interchangeable? We're just kind of figuring that out. So I do recommend supplementing with vitamin K2 as well. And that would just be a straight buy over the counter supplement. Well, I recommend actually a nice multivitamin. I'm trying to look, I want to look for like there's the, all of the ones that I just mentioned, those five micronutrients and the omega-3 fatty acids. Those all need to be incorporated into a plant-based diet to just cover the basis. So that could be part of a, a multivitamin. That's what I take. You So you just take one because when I think of supplements, I think of, oh gosh, now I'm going to have to line up my kitchen with, you know, 12 bottles or something, but you just take a one, one and done kind of multivitamin. One or two, it depends on which formulation you use. Yeah. Okay. That's wonderful. Well, I hate to do this, but radio is a hard taskmaster. We're going to go to a quick break and we will be right back as Plant Face Life and Style. I am here with Dr. Haver and I'm so happy to have all of her expert advice on switching over to a plant-based diet and just to make sure you do it the right way with all the nutrients. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. It's great to have you here. It's been quite a morning for Juliana and myself. So I'm glad we made it here. And I'm glad that you are here with us. We're going to get right back to radio in just a second here. Um, thank you for being with me, Juliana. I do appreciate it. Here we go. Oh, it's Plant-Based Life and Style. I'm Elizabeth Alfano. I am back with Dr. Haver. She is an author of Health Span Solution, The Vegetarian Diet, and The Plant-Based Nutrition Guide for Idiots. That would maybe be me. I don't know. Um, not true. I do work with the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine on helping them as a Food for Life instructor. And I did take the T. Colin Campbell class of plant-based nutrition at Cornell University. But Juliana takes our information today to another level. So right Right, at, right before break, we were talking about the five nutrients that you need. I just want to hit on these again because I think, you know, not everybody knows this information that we're talking about. Vitamin D, K2, B12. We're going to get our omega-3s, absolutely. And then what are the last two nutrients we should know about to make sure we don't miss them? The two minerals are iodine and zinc. Iodine and zinc. Okay, so my doctor suggested to me that I take a topical iodine right on the wrist. Is that something that you recommend? I have not even heard about a topical iodine. No, I recommend getting your iodine from either sea vegetables or iodized salt, or if you're not consuming, because we're seeing a lot of people not consuming enough iodine because that, that actually is a soil issue these days because depending on where you live, if you're close to the coast or not, you're probably not getting plenty of iodine. So we need on average for an adult about 150 micrograms a day. So I recommend either a sprinkle of sea vegetables or iodized salt. If you're not doing salt, most people aren't doing salt, which is why it's mm. become a problem because people are dealing with their high blood pressure or people are salt sensitive. And so, or they're using fancy salts, Himalayan black salt and black lava, so all those different fancy salts that do not, are not iodized. It has to say iodized on the, on the packaging. So because of that, I recommend being mindful of it and either doing what I said before or, or taking a supplement. And that's why I included it. That's in my multi that I take. 
Okay, and zinc is something probably everyone is familiar with because zinc got a lot of play during COVID time. But just for those maybe who are, are getting late to the program, where can we find zinc? So we can get zinc on a plant-based diet. We can get it in legumes and nuts and seeds. However, vegans do tend to fall short on it because mm -hmm. um, there's all these different nutrients or things, foods in plant foods like called phytates that can inhibit the absorption of zinc. So the RDA for vegetarians is to eat about 1.8 times the, the recommended number for people that are not on a plant-based diet. So, or you can supplement as well. Okay. Okay. Um, great tips there. You, I don't know if you'd like to give this information or not and understandable if you don't want to, but is there a multivitamin that you suggest that you think is superior to the others on the counter? I, I don't have no. one. I would right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we've been talking about some pretty important things. It's not just how you can start a plant-based diet and make sure you do it successfully and in a, in a smart way for yourself, but also that it can reverse disease. So maybe if you could talk to us about some of the common diseases that you've been able to help your clients with and reverse disease for them. Oh, I've worked with so many different people. I've worked with thousands of people at this point. I've worked with people with kidney disease and liver disease and a lot of the, the two most common because they're the most common pretty much that we see chronically around the world is type two diabetes and cardiovascular disease. And those are very well manageable and even reversible on a plant-based diet. So it's, it's really exciting to take someone that feels like they're gonna be on medication for the rest of their life and show them that they could actually taper off when they stick to a healthy whole food plant-based diet. So I always like to say that results are typical as opposed to what you see on those medication commercials out there that you know you can't get this, you may not get these results, but if you go to a plant-based diet, you will see the benefits. Yeah, um, maybe share with us going back a, a little ways, um, how long have you been plant-based and what brought you to plant-based nutrition? Or is that what you decided to study in school right out of the gate? Because you mentioned graduate school. Or what brought you to this path to this date? It was a long journey. And no, there was no such thing as a plant-based dietitian when I was um, studying yeah. and becoming one. Um, I, was, I was introduced to the concept when I was a teenager, when I was really young, by uh, John Robbins' book, Diet for a New America. And that's what inspired me <laughs> to explore this further. And of course I was a teenager, so I didn't really know exactly what I was doing. I was just doing everything I could to avoid animal products. And then, you know, my parents were concerned parents as they should be. And they were worried that I was just eating granola bars and rice cakes because I didn't know what I was doing. And so they talked me back out off of it, but I knew that there had to be more to this story that vegetarians weren't just like dying off as a breed because they were deficient in blah, blah, blah. So I proceeded to learn and study and research. And then I went to, I wanted to become a diet. Well, it's a long journey. That was a whole other story is how I became a dietitian. But during graduate school, I found out, I was started to see these little hints like, ooh, it's sponsored. The people that tell me to eat three dairy servings a day are sponsored by the dairy council. Um, all of that stuff that I started to learn. And then of course you learn statistics and you learn how to dive into the literature. And so as soon as I graduated, I started diving in myself and, and kind of did an actual exploration of where do you get your iron? Where do you get all these nutrients? And actually you can get it better sourced from plants. And then it was a no brainer. I switched my own diet after that and it changed everything for my health. And then that was it. I couldn't stop talking about it, teaching my clients and then the rest is history. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I feel that I interview so many people and for them, it's the same story. Once they switched, they could not help themselves, but pick up the bullhorn and be like, okay, everybody, I have found the solution to feeling better, to reversing disease, to getting more energy, to turning your life around. Even I'll say I've had guests on this show, the, the mental health impacts of eating healthier and how that helps you better throughout the day and therefore adjust your mental outlook because you're not struggling through these, you know, highs and lows of, you know, the, your sugar going up and down and you're having a much more consistent day and therefore it's easier to manage the stress of everyday life. So, um, I feel that a lot of people feel that way. Once they've got the answer, they just want to shout it from the mountaintops. So, um, you have six books out, you were saying, how long have you been working with clients individually? Six, well, I've been, I was in the health and fitness industry for 27 years now, but I've been teaching nutrition as a dietitian for 16. 
16. Wow. So in those 16 years, obviously, we all know this COVID was a tailwind for plant-based eating. But even prior to COVID, there has been more and more social acceptance of a plant-based diet. What have you seen in your own fiefdom of increased numbers for people interested in a plant-based diet? Well, the statistics don't really reflect exactly what I, I've seen. Of course, that's why we look at research as opposed to anecdote, but it seems like it's definitely an emergence. I see, obviously, we're all seeing it happening in the restaurants and markets where you see the actual term plant-based, which wasn't a thing back then. And it's been exciting to see how it's popping up everywhere. Um, but I think the statistics are a little, uh, there's a lag time for the actual number of people that are following this way of eating. But, you know, I've taught all over the world. I, I used to, before all of this, I traveled all over the world all the time and I saw it happening everywhere. And it was really quite exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I hate to go to break, but we are going to pick up on that right when we get back because I've got some very fun stories there. And it's Plant Based Life and Style with Elizabeth Alfano. We are going to be right back. Everybody on our socials today, all with Jane Unchained, we appreciate it. Thanks for sticking with us through a commercial break of radio. Um, Juliana's interview with me will be on three syndicated radio stations here and in Canada this weekend, where it's plant-based life and style. I'm Elizabeth Alfano. I am back with Dr. Haver. Juliana Haver is a plant-based dietitian. She's also the author of six books, and she's here to spread the news with us today. It's so exciting to have her with us. So we were talking about right before we went to break that Juliana was traveling the world, and she was seeing these communities sprout up of people interested in a plant-based diet all around the world. And I'm curious, what were some of the countries that you visited and what were anecdotally you were seeing of interest pop up in these different communities? Well, I spent a lot of time in Thailand over the last mm. few years. Um, I was doing some culinary retreats over there and it was extraordinary. And I just, and actually we brought people, it was a retreat. So we brought people from around the world, literally all over the world that came to our retreats. And, um, and people were learning how to cook plant-based. We had a, there was a culinary school there, which hopefully is opening again soon um, in Joaquin and spent some time in a little bit of time, a hot minute in China and a lot of time in the Caribbean on the, you know, just all traveling all over, speaking Canada, I have, you know, Australia, all over, just it's happening everywhere, Europe, it's just everywhere. I haven't spent a lot of time in Europe or Australia, but I hope to soon. And um, I was planning on going, we were doing a tour in France right before this all happened. So hopefully that's gonna happen next year. We're getting ready to, to launch that tour and hopefully the world opens up again so we can keep exploring. I hope so, because Europe just locked down again. So, I'd, uh, but I, I certainly hope so. So when you say lead a tour, you mean take your clients with you? And so mm -hmm. on a food tour or what kind of tour would it be? Yeah, well, I was doing culinary retreats that were like cooking school retreats and, and health span and nutrition information. But um, going forward also, yeah, a vegan culinary tour and exploring the, the native amazing options that are plant-based. Yeah, that's really so incredible. Well, what I find, because I do a lot of business reporting and I cover a lot of areas in the plant-based space, I'm seeing these different communities that are completely not connected come to the same conclusions through their own mediums that this is a healthier way to be for themselves, for the planet, for the environment, for animals, obviously. And they're all coming to it from different ways. Unlike the large corporations that that used to, I'll say, and perhaps still do dictate through large advertising budgets what people eat and what is socially acceptable, you're seeing all these people authentically and uniquely unadvertised to and unindoctrinated and uneven brainwashed. Some people would say that's a heavy word. I'm not using that word per se, but, you know, not dictated to come to it through their own means of what is meaningful to them in their connection to food and to their own health and finding that way themselves. So I, I just find that very inspirational that it's not dictated from a government or many multinational corporations, but people are coming to it in their own way, which I love. So maybe we should talk about that here. Obviously, you have so many individual clients, but for those maybe who are still considering a plant-based diet and still aren't sure if it's from for them, I wonder if you could give us your top five tips for starting a plant-based diet. 
Sure. Um, well, first of all, I think people have to want it. And so I try to not convince anyone anymore because I just, it is the best way to eat in terms of what I've seen in the, the literature. But if you are interested, it is a fabulous, fun and positive journey. And that's my first tip is to keep it really positive and exciting instead of thinking, oh, I can't eat with these seven animal product groups. I could eat thousands of different delicious versions and variations of vegetables, fruits, whole grains, legumes, mushrooms, nuts, seeds, herbs, and spices in infinite tasty combinations. And to explore and think positive of what you're gonna add to your diet. Like what are all the different things you've never tried before? Like, have you ever tried Ruby quinoa? Have you ever tried, you know, the jackfruit like there's so many different things that people have never even explored it's like this whole new world opens up so that's tip number one is to have fun with it uh, the second thing i would say is to explore a wide variety and to just kind of anything you could eat we could eat vegan so you like figure out something that you love and then veganize it plant-based eyes it you know find if now we have the google machine so you can go in there and and, and type in whatever you love to eat, if, if it's a bolognese or whatever it is that you love to eat and you can make it plant-based. So it's never been an easier time because there's so much information and infinite <laughs> recipes at your fingertips. So find stuff you love, enjoy it, have, make it really positive. The third thing I would say is, you know, find like-minded people that are kind of on mm -hmm. the same page that have been doing it for years or decades because they will have lots of tips for you. And there's great social media groups out there uh, and all sorts of, there's people everywhere now that are wanting to talk about it. And like you said, shout from the rooftop. So, you know, connect with like-minded people just to have some of that support. Um, the fourth, let's see, I haven't thought this out ahead of time. Fourth tip for going plant-based would be to make sure you are mindful of your notable nutrients. So if you go to my website, mm -hmm. plant-based, dietitian.com and all over my social media, plant-based dietitian or plant dietitian or Juliana Hever on social media. And I have videos on notable nutrients and six daily threes. And I have, like I said, six books out there that are just filled with all this information just to educate yourself, empower yourself and, and find out what you need to be mindful of so that you, you can do this in a real strategic way. Because like any diet, no diet is perfect and every diet requires being attentive to it. And I guess that's four tips. So my fifth tip would be um, find foods well, you love. It has to be foods that you love to eat. I'll hop in there and say what I find is really helpful for people, particularly in the beginning when they're like, oh, no, how's this going to go? How's this going to shake out? Go ahead and plan your week ahead of time. So if you have some time on a Sunday and you can cook for the rest of the week, make that quinoa and sauteed vegetables with beans and avocados, uh, you know, the avocado you would peel at the last minute, but everything else you could have ready so that you don't have to stand in front of the, the refrigerator door saying, I'm not sure I can do it. I'm not sure what to do. You'll know what to do because it's already planned out. You've already made it. So I would just spend some time, at least in the beginning when you're still getting your like, oh, this is my go-to recipe. Oh, this is my go-to food. Oh, this is my go-to snack. You know, you are starting a new habit. So um, give yourself a little bit of prep time in advance. That's what I like. And then I'll just say anecdotally from my own life, when I was making the transition, I thought, oh my gosh, what am I going to eat? And then I switched over and I was like, who kept eggplants for me? Why didn't I know about sweet potatoes? Why were asparagus not on my plate before? I just realized that my life had been very small with meat and dairy. I had been eating ham and cheese, ham and cheese sandwiches all the time. And then when I opened up to what else was out there, you were saying things like ruby red quinoa, but even that might be like, like next level. I'm just talking about basics like, wow, eggplant, Sweet potato is now one of my very favorite dishes and I never ate it before. And it's sweet and it's great for you and there's nothing to making it. You put it in the oven, then you go away, you take a shower, you come back, it's ready. I mean, there's nothing to it. You add some walnuts and cranberries and I just, you know, I'm all about it. So just like you were saying, your step number one, get rid of that negative veil that's hanging out there for no reason, thinking that, you know, you're not going to have enough things to eat. Just get rid of that because the world is filled with this plethora of really gorgeous, colored, beautiful food just waiting for you. <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's always fun to encourage people to come on to a plant-based diet um, just because that discovery, it's almost like a little kid opening presents at Christmas time. You know, there's so much to discover. I agree. 
Well, okay. One of the, I think, myths we talked about when we started the conversation about myths that people have, like, oh, I'm not going to get enough protein. Um, often people are worried, like, oh, I won't feel well. I'll go through withdrawals and this will be, you know, I won't have enough energy throughout the day. And I wondered if you could dispel that myth for people, because in my own personal experience, it was the exact opposite. Uh, well, I've seen some people have that. It depends on what they're coming from. So, mm -hmm. you know, I get to meet them where they're at. And a lot of people do have a lot of like detoxification symptoms. If they're coming from it from a standard Western diet, which many people are, and all of a sudden you go with super healthy overnight, which not everyone does. Some people transition. In fact, the research shows that if you transition stepwise, you're more likely to be uh, long-term sustainable. It's easier to mm -hmm. kind of like tiptoe in. Um, but the people that kind of dive in, there are some people that prefer that. I've seen people have some symptoms and it's just kind of like they need some time to just kind of adjust. And usually it just takes within a week. Most people, if not almost everyone that sticks to it, will ultimately within a few days start to feel better and better and better and better than they've ever felt in their lives. And then, then starts ha things start happening. Like I've had clients get off medications in a week, blood pressure medications, lifelong a week. within a week. Yeah, I've seen some crazy things. <laughs> Wow, I've never heard of that. I've, I've heard that people were off meds by like day 30, sometimes even three weeks, but I've never heard in a week. And boy, so we're talking about, gosh, this sort of new lease on food life if you have so many more choices than you never had before. But think of a life without pills. That really is a huge new lease on life. You're not only not tethered to those pills anymore, but pills are gosh darn expensive. So, you know, do you think about not having to put those kind, that kind of, time in because all the doctor's appointments to make sure you got your pills and your medications and the doses and stuff, then you don't have to spend that money. I mean, really, you know, side you effects. A lot of side effects. Those oh, don't just come yes. 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 I, um, I had forgotten about those. And it's funny. So I'm 54. And I'm like the only person in my 50s I know who doesn't take any medicine. I mean, I, I'm sorry to say this, but it seems like almost a rite of passage or what people just say, like, well, I'm over 50, so of course I take meds. And that's just like an accepted way of moving through the world. And I'm just here to say it doesn't have to be that way. It's true. And Juliana is here to tell you the exact same thing. Um, and so I just do want to give a plug again for Juliana. Dr. Haver has six books, but uh, we've been referencing today the Health Span Solution, Plant-Based Nutrition Guide for Idiots. Love that name. Um, and the Vegetarian Diet. The um, Vegetarian Diet, just a clarification here, because people think Mediterranean Diet. It doesn't have fish in it, does it? Just double checking. And no, so this book was basically, I was going around every year as a dietitian seeing, oh, world's best diet is the Mediterranean diet. And so I wanted to dive deep into the research and find out why is the Mediterranean diet getting all of this press when really a whole food plant-based diet is the only diet that we've ever seen actually reverse advanced stage cardiovascular disease and type two diabetes when the results on a plant-based diet far exceed the literature on a Mediterranean diet. And so this is a deep dive into what people think a, a Mediterranean diet is and why they think it's good. People think that if they eat fish and gar, you know guzzle on the olive oil and drink red wine, they're gonna get all the benefits of the Mediterranean. But in fact, my thesis is that the number one reason a Mediterranean diet is so efficacious is because it is at its core and at its origin, origin a whole food plant-based diet. Sure, makes total sense to me and all the people who are listening to us while we go to break, we'll be right back. I'm getting picking right up on that. I got so much to say about that. Oh, it's Plant-Based Life and Style. I'm here with Dr. Haver. Uh, Juliana Haver is a plant-based dietitian and author of six books. We're talking about her book, Vegetarian Diet, and why there's this conception out there, another myth, I guess, that we're busting here on this show, that a, a Mediterranean diet is better than a whole food plant-based diet when actually all the literature says something else. I'm working with a hospital in Chicago as we're they're doing a study and I'm helping them facilitate that study to look at that exactly a vegan plant-based diet versus a Mediterranean diet. So a diet, just olive oil and fish and maybe some chicken, I guess. Um, so we're going to be studying that over an eight week period because we all want to put that to rest and we're, we're, we want to bust that myth for sure. So I love that your book, Vegetarian Diet does that. Um, all these shows go so fast. So it's, 
it's a bit of a bummer that we're in our last segment, but I have one more question that I want to ask you because I think we were talking before about how people can start on a plant-based diet. And I'm wondering if you have tips for people of the top five foods everybody should eat. Yes, actually, I have a mnemonic called the six daily threes, and it's what I recommend people prioritize for nutrition. So on the six daily threes, which again, I have on my website, and I have videos all about explaining and breaking down the details of the six daily threes. But essentially, I want you to have at least three servings a day of leafy green and cruciferous vegetables. That's one. The other one would be the other colored vegetables, orange, reds, yellows, all of those. And then I would include legumes in that. So lentils, peas, beans, hummus should be a food group, tofu, tempeh. Um, and then nuts and seeds, one to two ounces of nuts and seeds a day. And fruit is the other one. So just having those as priorities. I also want to, I'm going to add to my six day threes and add mushrooms in there because those are so extraordinarily promoting and really good for the immune system, which is obviously very important as we're learning a lot about these days. And um, those are the most important foods that I would recommend everyone get every single day in their diet. Yeah, I love that. Um, and as you work those foods into your diet and you start, you know, maybe going online or there's some recipe books, Juliana probably has recipes as well. There's a gobs of recipes on my site, elizabethalfano.com slash recipes. You're going to work in those colorful vegetables. You're going to work in those seeds. You're not going to have to look at them as five separate groups that you have to nibble on throughout the day. You're going to learn those recipes so that many of the dark leafy green vegetables are just incorporated with the gorgeous bell peppers, red and green and yellow and squash and colorful things, but then you sprinkle some seeds on top perhaps or whatever the recipe requires. But you're gonna get a couple of those key recipes that speak to your palate under your belt and it's just not going to be that hard to start working in the healthiest foods on the planet for you. Um, so you didn't mention sweet potatoes. It's a vegetable. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yes, we'll go with that. I have to stand up for the sweet potato. Uh, but I love that you give mushrooms the ultimate play. I think they're going through a heyday in terms of, you know, what's being talked about of late in the press. And so that's very exciting to see that mushrooms are starting to be on everyone's radar. I, they're just such a fascinating food for so many reasons. They're not a vegetable. Technically, they're not animal. Obviously, they're fungi, which is its own category. And um, it's just a lot of work being done around mushrooms. Well, so as we talk to people about how they start a plant-based diet and all these great things that they can do, how do you feel about plant-based alternatives? So the, the meat alternatives, et cetera. Oh, I just posted a video about this on Monday. Um, I think that it's wonderful that there are options for people that are transitioning and for treat foods and for children that really want to fit in with their friends. But I think that it's something that should be treated as such. I think that there, you know, it's better to focus on the whole plant foods, of course, because I, for the first time in 16 years of practicing, I'm seeing people come to me with this, people that are vegan with the very similar health issues as the omnivores because they're eating an abundance of these products. Because anything you could eat, I could eat vegan now, meats, cheeses, cookies, ice creams, candies, and those are not necessarily health promoting. So I think if you treat them as a treat or a transition food or a once in a while type of thing, they can absolutely fit into a health promoting diet. And what does that mean if you could give us, because some people, you know, really have trouble knowing when to say no, I'll be in that camp. So when you say treat them as a treat, uh, one time a week, twice a week, or how does that work out? Depends on your overall diet and your health and where, what your goals are and, you know, what your current status is. I look at all of that when I make specific recommendations. So yeah, mm -hmm. once a week is going to hurt you. Once a month is definitely not going to hurt you. Every other week, it just depends on what's going on in your life at that time and where you are and how you feel and really what you're trying to do with your diet and your health. Mm -hmm. All right. Or do you often counsel families rather than individuals? Because, you know, for some people, they come to it and they themselves want to switch over. But of course, they're cooking for three or four other people. So um, how do you work with families? Yeah, I do. I work with lots of families. I have people come. Well, if the kids are younger, then I'm just dealing with the parents. I'm usually dealing with the person that's cooking. I've dealt with many husband and wife teams. I've dealt with, sure. like I have kids this week that their parents are coming to me with the kids, like just like teenagers that are interested. It just depends on the situation, but I either one-on-one -on -one, kid on kid and parent or adults or, and I've had um, kids of the adults, like older adults, um, want to consult with me to help their, you know, pa parent that's struggling with health issues. So I work with all sorts of different people all around the world. It's really, it's quite exciting. And it's pretty, it's amazing what food can do. I just, I'm, I'm consistently blown away by the power of your fork. 
Mm-hmm. And it is such joyful work, you know, to help people turn their lives around. It is really such meaningful, joyful work. Thank you for doing it. Uh, okay. So I wonder if you have a phrase or a philosophy that you share with people because sometimes you do fall off the wagon, so to speak, and you have to get back on. And I'm wondering if there's any sort of coaching mentality that you help people get through if they do sort of have a tough day. Absolutely. In fact, that is the premise of my new podcast, the Choose You Now podcast, and my new book, The Choose You Now Diet. And it evolved from my work with my clients. And the whole point is you're choosing yourself now. And you get to choose again and again and again. So if you fall off the wagon, you choose again today. You choose again every single day in every single mail, every single choice. You get to choose yourself every single time over and over and over again. Doesn't matter. You can't, there's nothing you can't really undo from a diet perspective. You just start again. It's just starting again. Radical self-compassion, loving yourself. It's okay. You are human after all and start again today. What I love about this is it uh, prioritizes the individual. So it's so easy in our stressful lives, particularly for women, but also for men, you know, to, I've got to meet this deadline and I've got to do that. And I've got to get this for this person and everything's weighing on you. And when you have a kind relationship with food, you're really putting yourself first and you're prioritizing yourself, which is a practice in and of itself. You know, we talk about practicing different recipes and getting used to shopping for things that are colorful and in the produce aisle. It's also practicing putting yourself first, which I love. So that's, of course, a beautiful thing and and always a good thing. Um, If you are running really behind schedule, you don't have time for lunch, what's your go-to snack? OB? Oh, I always make time for it. (laughs) I prioritize. I don't really snack. I eat meals. So I'm not a big snacker. I'd rather, I prioritize, I time it. I know exactly what I'm doing. I plan ahead and um, I usually eat, you know, the similar things, a a variety of different recipes that I kind of gravitate towards. Do you always eat the same time every day? I try to, but my schedule doesn't really allow it. So about Yeah. yeah. Yes. I love that because it shows to people like, hey, no hard and fast rules here. We all do the best we can. And um, it is progress, not perfection. I leave on that note. Dr. Haver, it's been so great to have you here with me. Juliana is a plant-based dietitian and she has the books Health Span Nutrition, Plant-Based Nutrition Guide for Idiots, The Vegetarian Diet, and your new book and podcast, which is Choose You Now. Also very exciting. You can find her everywhere that you might expect on her website, plantbaseddietitian.com and Juliana Haver and Plant-Based Dietitian on Instagram. And for recipes, you can find me, of course, elizabethalvano.com slash recipes. I'm on Instagram and LinkedIn, lots and lots of Facebook as well as Elizabeth Alfano. So come reach out to me. I love to cook. I'm Sicilian. So if you are, are having a tough time with recipes, I am here to help you out most definitely. And of course, as is Juliana. So thank you for being with me today. And thank you everybody for watching and listening on radio. Thanks for all you do. Juliana, stay put. Bye everybody. <laughs>